see over the last three days that my wife and I spent with you, I felt more and more and more attached to all of you. And this is the beauty of Islam that it unites all of us simply by our creed. And I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our Islam with each other. Even though, you know, I'm losing my voice and I'm getting to the limit. However, I would like you to bear with me for 10 minutes more. I would like to address an issue which was asked by lots of people in the questions that I received last night. And I would like, if I am permitted, to speak as if I am talking to the youth. Because this issue concerns the youth as much as it concerns all of us. Because it is something that needs not be a dilemma and a problem and a burden. And once we get comfortable with it, inshallah, our young people will lead the way so that their generation will not have the problem that the older people, our generation, are having. And this is concerning the so-called hijab. So please bear with me. I would like not to take more than 10 minutes. And I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower his blessings on us as we are listening and opening our hearts and minds to receive the answer, inshallah. Now, I would like to ask you, are you ready to give me 10 minutes of concentration? Are you ready? No, no, I don't think you are. I would like to hear an answer. Are you ready? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, our choice of what we wear seems on the surface as our choice, but it is not. We heard from Brother Abdullah that we are living through the times of deception. Things on the surface look one way, when in actuality they are not. As Muslims who believe in the Quran, who believe what we read in the Quran, let me mention one thing which is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent directly to Bani Israel, but it involves all of us. In that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the people of Bani Israel saying, Would you believe in parts of the book and disbelieve in other parts? Does that make sense? When you say that you are Muslims and you open the Quran, you say, okay, this is simple, I'll take it. This is a little bit difficult, but I'll get used to it with time. No, this is too much. I will leave it aside. This, oh, it doesn't suit me. It might have suited the people of Arabia. Now I'm living in Fort Lauderdale. Things are so different. And this man looks strange to a person who is not accustomed to the modesty displayed in the kind of clothes he was wearing. Now, do you think, and please answer me from your hearts, that as Muslims who know that the Quran has not been distorted even by one letter, and it's a fact known to non-Muslims as much as it is known to Muslims, do you think, do you think that it will be logical knowing that all of the Qur'an is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to say that parts of it can be acceptable and parts are not. Is it logical? No, please answer me, brothers. Is it logical? No, it's not. So would you like to know what the Qur'an says regarding the Islamic dress? Many people have argued, show me where does the Qur'an talk about hijab? You know, this is the problem. The confusion is that people called the Islamic dress hijab. 
It is not called hijab. The word hijab used in the Quran talks about something else altogether. And that's why when they started to say, show me where does it say that women have to put hijab on? I will say, nowhere. It doesn't say that. Islamic dress has been wrongfully called hijab. Because you know, when people say that hijab is the Islamic dress, they say, oh, it doesn't concern men. So let's talk about Islamic dress, it's called hijab. So let the sisters listen, brothers, you can take a break. Doesn't it always happen that when we talk about Islamic dress, the brothers take a break, they close their ears, it doesn't concern us. We can wear anything. No, you can't. Brothers and sisters, in the Quran, the word hijab was used in reference to the partition that has to be placed when the companions of the Prophet will talk to his wives. Do not talk to them except from behind a hijab. That's how it was used. However, for Muslims, we talk about the Islamic dress, which is called in the Quran, libas at-taqwa, the clothing of righteousness. And you know, when we open Surah Al-A'raf, and we read Surah Al-A'raf, we find out similar to many other things that were sent down by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and we have no choice therein. The clothing we put on, we have no choice therein. Because Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us in Surah Al-A'raf, Ya Bani Adama, Qad anzalna alaykum libasa. And the word anzalna means we have told you what to wear. The word anzalna means revealed. We descended. We brought down. So when we read in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf, قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٍ لِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٍ Not the kind of clothing with the halter top and the revealing clothes where parts of the body are showing, saying to the others, I want you to recognize I am beautiful. I want you to see what I possess. And then women themselves start to compare what they have because of those revealing things. And clothing became relevant. It started from the nudist clubs and you go on. So where do you draw the line? The line is drawn by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who has the only authority to tell us what to wear. قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ We have brought down to you a kind of clothing that will cover your private parts. وَرِيشَ And ornaments. Ornaments in the way we look to the special people who need to see. You know, I had one brother tell me one day, he, and he had a problem fighting with his wife. He said, Brother, I have to tell you, the only time I see my wife beautiful is when we have to go out. When we are invited to a wedding, that's the only time I see her beautiful. But when I come home, I can't even look at her. Because she doesn't really care for the person who should see her beauty, contrary to the teachings of the Quran. Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam in the nude. And let us examine the Quran now. Why? Allah created Adam in the nude. And when we will come out of our graves, all of us will come out in the nude. And Aisha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was so surprised. He said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, we will have to see each other, men and women." He said, "Aisha, the situation at that time will be so severe and serious that you will not pay attention to this, and the nature that Allah subhanahu wa taala will establish will prevail. The same as when Adam was created in the nude." And then his wife, Hawa, was created in the nude. They lived together. 
they didn't recognize their nudity at all. And when they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guess what was the first punishment imposed by Allah on them? What was the first punishment after they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Immediately, they recognized their nudity. Immediately. That was a punishment. Let us recognize that. And they started, They started to take leaves to cover each other. Husband and wife. So we were created in the nude. We will come out in the nude. But in the hayatul dunya, in this life, we have to dress ourselves according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. It is not Christian Dior or the other fashion places of Paris who are going to tell us what to wear. It is Allah and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has told us what to wear and his messenger prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the other prophets before him you know that there are commonal commonalities among different ways of life there are people who go to churches and they cover their heads when we find sisters among the Muslims who find it too embarrassing and demeaning when they come to the masjid to put something on in accordance to the teachings of the Quran. Let us not be too arrogant and consider that complete dress that will give dignity to that body according to what is in the Quran. Will we say now, oh, it doesn't concern us. Let's go to Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur. Who are you allowed to show your beauty to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the males before the females. يغضضن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا ما ظهر منها ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا ما ظهر منها وليضربن بخمورهن على جيوبهن ولا يبدين زينتهن This is the part I will translate and let them not show their beauty except إلا after I translate all of this, I will ask myself, what else do we need? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies the kind of relationship that allows you to see the beauty of that woman. Their husbands. Their fathers. Their fathers-in-law. أو أبنائهن or their children, their sons أو أبناء بعولتهن the children of their husbands if they are married into a second marriage أو إخوانهن their brothers أو أبناء إخوانهن their nephews أو أبناء أخواتهن the nephews of their sisters أو نسائهن أو ما ملكت أيمانهن the women who are in their service or whatever their rights hands possess أو, or the children who are not yet of the age of puberty who do not really recognize you see puberty is another biological facility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created to show us what goes on in the feelings of the young people they started to recognize the beauty of the opposite sex they start to have certain desires they start to have certain feelings and that is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have reached the age where you have now to guard your chastity and you have to preserve that beauty except for those people and know that only the husband can see everything of you and no one else not your father, not your brother, not your son, not your nephew. No one 
except you're that special man, your husband. And after that, are we going to argue? It is demeaning. It is, you know, it's only in your mind. And I say to the brothers, you know, brothers, if you will ask your wives to complete the rules of modesty, you would better start with yourself. And if that is not as obvious in your dress, it can be obvious in other things you do. And you say, don't swear at home and require your children not to swear. Don't ask your children not to be violent and you abuse your wife and you yell at her in their presence and you beat her up or do whatever. This is not the kind of relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you. Now I would leave you with this thought, brothers and sisters, forgive me if at times my voice went so high and I know that many brothers or sisters may argue that this is not the effective way of relating a message. But as you can tell, each speaker, each presenter, each da'i has his or her own style of doing da'wah. I get emotional when it is something that touches our lives. As I was talking about marriage last night, and please forgive me, and I hope that whatever I left with you before I go back home will be something that you will think about with sincerity, knowing that it came from a brother who really means well, and he would like to see that you've taken his words, not as being his own opinion, but whatever he has learned from the Quran and the Sunnah. So I leave it with you, I hope, that if I live until next year and if you invite me again next year and if I come, I will be able to see that there is a difference, that there is a change, that there is something that we can see for the better. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to shower his mercy on us because we have no time to waste on domestic issues. We need to go ahead and look after the future of those children and prepare them to face the world outside. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.